Good evening, Rock Church. And welcome to all of you this fine Sunday evening. Welcome to all of you tonight in Jesus' name. It is an honor to come to you tonight in, um, in this moment together to search the scriptures, to see what the Lord would say to us tonight. And I trust that you come with an open heart and an open mind to hear and receive what the Spirit wants to say to us. Truly, we live in perilous times. We live in those moments just before the coming of the Son of Man. We are looking for his appearing. And the Bible does say that to, do, to those who look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And indeed, that is our hope. That's the hope that lives within our bosom right now today, the hope of the resurrection. And that is just, that's the first part of the coming of the Lord. The dead in Christ will rise first, and then the, we which are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet them, with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we, we are looking for that day. Amen. And as I have mentioned a number of times before, the hope that we have is indeed a hope that is secure, a sure hope, a steadfast hope, one that lets us know that when Jesus does return, those who have died in Christ will be raised to life again at that day. And those of us who are alive and remain, we will put on our glorified body and we will rise to meet the Lord in the air again. This is the hope that was put into our bosom when we received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so whatever we do in this hour, this, these moments before the coming of the Lord, we are doing it in preparation for that day. Every moment that we live in the here and now is, is preparation. Salvation is a, a process. Salvation is a continuing work of the spirit in us day by day. We have received the spirit of salvation. We receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is that gift of salvation. But, but, but hear me when I say we are not saved yet. It's in here. The bosom in our bosom today is this great hope of salvation. But we live moment by moment, day by day, living and watching for the coming of the Lord. And that is, that is that hope. Amen. Somebody needs to hear the word of the Lord right now. I apologize for looking down. I'm trying to do two things at once. But I want you to know tonight, beyond the shadow of any doubt, that we have a hope that lives inside of us. That will sustain us when we feel the pressure of this world, when we feel the angst, the anger, the frustration because of what is coming at us from without. Right. The spirit of God is in, but everything else is without and it's coming at us. If it can, it will get in. But we staying full of the Holy Ghost, we, the people of God, staying purposeful in our relationship with Jesus Christ, having that constant inflow of the Spirit, having that constant outflow of ministry and speaking and teaching and ministry to others, prayer and praise, that continuous flow in of the Spirit of God keeps us keeps us purged from all of those other things that are trying to get in and may sometimes get in. We, we feel it. We get, it gets in us. We get angry. We have frustrations, but again, we go back to that fountain of living water that is put inside of us. That well of water springing up into everlasting life out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And so we go back to that, that resource, we go back to that spring, clear out all the debris from the spring, get it flowing again, right? How do we do that? We go back in prayer, we repent, 
do the first works again, empty out all of the things that need to be out of the way and get that spring flowing up again, as Jesus said that it would. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is good teaching right now. Yeah. It is good teaching right now. And um, honestly, this is not even anything that I was looking at in the scriptures this afternoon. Is um, I, Maybe we should talk about this a little bit more. We'll just see where the Holy Ghost leads. But it is something to consider every single day of our lives, our walk with our walk with the Lord. Is something that is it's daily. It's a relationship. If you've been married for any length of time, it's because you have built a relationship on daily communication. Daily, we we speak daily, our spouses and and we we come together in fellowship in breaking bread together around the table. And we have that fellowship with one another and that keeps us together. It's when couples refuse to communicate. It's when couples refuse to humble themselves to one another. It's when the relationship starts to break down. It's the same way with Jesus Christ. He is always available to talk. The problem is you and me, we fail in our communication efforts at times. And the communication breaks off and then the fellowship breaks off. And then there is this gap that comes between us and the Lord. And we we don't fellowship him like we ought. And there's this separation produces a an emptiness inside. And so what happens? We start looking in other places for fulfillment. And so this is what Israel did. You go back and you look at Israel in the time of the, the judges and the time of the kings. They 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 left off their first love. They went away from God and began searching after other gods that could give them um, that instantaneous gratification, if you please. And therefore, they lost their fellowship with the one true God. Again, this is part of our walk with Jesus day by day, moment by moment, living always in him. Amen. Well, glory to God. There is a a very sweet flow of the Holy Ghost already, and I would like us to go ahead and enter into prayer and then... When we get done praying, we will see where we go from here. But let's pray together. Um, not going to necessarily take any prayer request, as it were, but let's pray. And if God brings something to your mind and you speak that word of faith over someone, um, let your voice out wherever you are. Because this is how we exercise our faith. One of the ways that we exercise faith is when we open our mouths and we speak words of praise, of adoration, request, petition, praying in the spirit. All of these things are acts of faith. I'm going to say this again and again. It, it's almost regular that I say this whenever I get behind the pulpit or the, or the camera. But we do not understand the amount of faith that we exercise when we pray especially when we pray in the spirit. We exercise an enormous amount of faith when we do that. And that's the moment. Those are the moments. Let me say it this way. Those are the moments when we are praying in that way that really and truly it's not our faith that we're using. Oh, yes, we exercise faith by breaking into that realm by exercising our faith to pray, then we get into the flow of the spirit. And then when we pray in tongues now, that's rhema that's coming out of our mouths. Now we're using Jesus' faith. Now you think about that for a second. How much faith does that require for us to trust 
that the things that are coming from our mouth in the spirit is true and right. The spirit of the age says that that's gibberish. It's nonsense. It's fake. It doesn't mean anything. And if you listen to what's going on in your own mind at that particular moment, your own thought process will tell you, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. But again, we we take those things, those vain imaginations, the, those imaginations, and we we throw them down. We cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What is the purpose? That we are pulling down strongholds. We use those mechanisms, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's how we tear down strongholds. These strongholds are fortresses that are built in our minds. It's very easy to build them. All you have to do is do nothing. Just let your thoughts go wherever they want to go. Just let them run to and fro. Let them pull things out of the air and plant them into your mind. And then now your strongholds are being built of faithlessness, of fear and doubt and unbelief. If we, if we really knew what was going on in the spirit realm, the evil forces that are in play right here, right now, the things that are at work in governments, not just here in the United States, but around the world, things that are being put into place right now to bring us ever closer and closer to to a, a one world system of government, of money, even of religion. We, if we only knew the half of those things, I, there was an article that I wanted to share with you tonight um, that um, I'm using my phone as the camera. And so it's the news thing that I was reading is there and I was trying to pull it up on my iPad, but it's, it, it, it's not coming across. But the truth is, if we let all of these things going on in the world get inside of here, and begin to build strongholds of fear, wondering how are we going to make it? How are we going to survive our, our you know, money? How are we going to get groceries and buy gas for the car? How are we going to do all these things? I don't know the answer to those questions. I don't believe there is one single person on the face of the earth that can give us an answer for that. But the Bible, God's holy word has promised us that our father, our father, which is in heaven, has promised us in Matthew chapter six and in Luke 11, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. No, those were exact words are not in those verses, but that's the gist. Because when he says in Matthew six, that we are not like the heathen. We are not like the, the, the godless people who don't have a father that have to ask God for everything, shelter, clothing, and food. We are children of the Most High. Our father is God. He will supply all our need according to his riches and glory. Do you think God is swayed one ounce by by the, the 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 forces that are in play in the earth, he's not worried about that. Jesus Christ, ministry on the earth, his death, burial, and resurrection, conquered Satan, defeated him, put him forever under his feet. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. But yet, well, we know death is not finished. Death is still in play here. Death is still able to take lives. Death still comes. Death will be death and hell will be the last two things to be cast into the lake of fire. But even in all of this, death 
is death for the believer is just the step between earth and glory. That, that's that's all death is. So our father in heaven is not is not worried about the forces that are in play, the evil forces that are in play in the earth right now. He's not concerned about that because it's done. It's finished. And he has put the same authority that was in the Christ that conquered these things, that defeated Satan and the kingdom of darkness forever. It's defeated. It's finished. It's done. Yes, the kingdom of God that's in the earth and the kingdom of darkness that's still in the world. Yes, those two kingdoms are still clashing for the souls of men. But ultimately, the book ends with you and me, the church of the living God, victorious over all of those things. So there is an end to this, but it's not yet. So again, I go back to the point. No, our father is not concerned with with what's in play here. His concern is for the souls of men. And he will do and has done already what is necessary. And he will continue to do in and through the church whatever is necessary to see to it that the church is successful in its mission in the earth. We are, we're not going to starve to death. We're not going to be left without a roof over our head or shoes on our feet or clothes on our backs or food on our table. The church of the living God is going to be successful in the, in the earth, no matter what the climate is outside. Amen. Yeah. That is the truth. The world system, the cosmos, it's going to be what it is. It's going to be vile. It's going to be wicked because the God of this world is, is Satan himself. But that's not our concern. Our concern is the souls of men. I, I read something today and I, I told my wife, I said, the devil is a fool. The devil is an absolute fool. He had everything at his disposal. He had everything at his disposal. He was in the presence of God always. Until iniquity was found in his heart and he was cast out of heaven and, and now no longer Never again will he find a place with God. Never again will he ascend back to that place. Never. We, you and me, the church of the living God, have actually been given his place at the throne. It is through us, the church of the living God, it is through us that praise and glory and honor are passed through us up to him in prayer, in prayer. And adoration, when we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, we are doing through us what Satan will never again have the opportunity to do. Um, um, it's in Revelations chapter 20. This is the verse. I'm just I'm going to just share this verse with you. I don't know. I don't I really don't know where we're going to go from here, but. Yeah, we're going to pray here in a minute. But if, just permit me to follow this flow that, that's, that I'm in right now. The world system, the cosmos, as that's the Greek word for world in, in the New Testament scriptures. It's used in, in, other different, in other different Greek words. But the word cosmos means the system. It's not the earth, but it's the system of the world that we're in. It's the, it's the wickedness, the vileness. And it has a God, the God of this world, which is Satan, as I've already stated. But this is the scripture in Revelation 20, verse 10. And, and this is, um, um, it's after the battle of Armageddon and Jesus Christ on his white horse with the saints of God coming on their white horses and the sword goes out of his mouth and, 
and, and kills everybody there at the Battle of Armageddon. And then in verse 20, it's time for the, the thousand year millennial reign. And uh, Revelations 20, verse 10, is so I'm going to read that. And in Revelations 20, the devil is bound a thousand years. An angel comes down and takes hold of Satan. He's bound with chains for a thousand years and he's cast into the bottomless pit. And he's held there for a thousand years. Then the thousand years of millennial reign of Christ and the church and those Jews that were rescued, the 144,000 that were rescued that never took the mark of the beast during the tribulation and the great tribulation. Then at the end of the thousand years, the devil is released for a season to and, and whatever people, whatever human beings are still on the face of the earth after the battle of Armageddon during that thousand year reign, Jesus will sit on the throne and he will rule with an iron fist. We will sit on thrones and rule with him during that thousand years and then Satan is released and he goes out to deceive the nations unto the four corners of the earth unto the battle of Gog and Magog and the Bible says in verse 9 Revelations 20 and 9 and they this, these are the deceived ones that are gathering themselves to battle against Jesus Christ and his people that are reigning during this thousand years, this millennial reign of Christ, those people come up, it says, and they went up onto the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, that's Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And here's the clincher. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet were already cast a couple of chapters before and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the devil cannot help himself. He cannot stop what he is doing. He cannot, he cannot, he absolutely cannot do anything except fulfill the word and the will of God. He attempts it now. He's still trying to destroy the church, the kingdom of God. He's still attempting. He thought he would do it when he killed the Christ. He thought he would stop the church. He thought he would drive them underground, that they would never, the church would, would, would be uh, incapacitated at some point in time. It disappeared, as it were, during the Dark Ages, but it was revived again. And in the 1900s, it's, re, it's, it's again, it's sweeping again the world from 1900 until now. And now pe more people are being filled with the Holy Ghost now than ever it ever occurred in the book of Acts. And then the epistles that are written about what occurred in the book of Acts, so that's, it, it's, it's never been seen on the level that it's happening now. And the devil is continuing to try. And the point I'm making is he cannot ex do anything but fulfill God's word. So here, here we are. Here's, here's the point that Jesus is wanting to make to you and me. We are at this moment, at right now. And this goes right back to the beginning when I started talking, talking about the hope that lives inside of us. It's in us right now. Right here, right now, we are already victorious. The church of the living God, the kingdom of God that's in the earth right now, it's, it's settled. It's sealed. It's done. It's victorious. You and me are part of something that has already been prophesied. It's already written in the scriptures. And we're just waiting for it to for the fulfillment to come, for Jesus to return for his bride, to take his bride with him back to heaven. And then we get to the battle of Armageddon. And then we get to the, the marriage supper of the lamb. And then all of Gog and Magog, and I may not have the order correctly on these particular events, but all of these things are set in Scripture. So we have no reason whatsoever to lose our minds in this last hour before the coming of the Lord. 
We have a sure salvation. We have an eternal hope that lives inside of us. John 3.16, anyone can quote it just about anywhere in the world. People can quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's easy to quote that or read that and and just run right over everlasting life. But that's exactly what it is. Why are we ever fearful? Why why do we ever feel the dread and the angst of 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 death or disease or the world and the devil? I get it. We are flesh and blood. We are made lower than the angels. But what the angels do not have, we have. Not even the angels of God have what we have. We have the spirit of God that is inside of us. Isn't there a scripture right now that says even the angels desire to look into what you and I have? When we pray in the Holy Ghost and you feel those goosebumps on the back of your neck and your hair stands up all over your body and the angels walk into your room while you're praying like that because they have such an awe and a a lack of understanding. And so they're looking at us as we pray this way and they're and, and they that they want to look into it. They're in the presence of God always, but yet they don't have what we have. We have the very force of heaven living in our bosom. You want to know why your prayer closet is challenged like it is? Because the power that goes on in your prayer closet, the power that is released From within us, as we open our mouths in prayer, especially in the spirit, when we release that voice from inside of us, we are releasing a force that the angels can't handle it. The demons of hell, Satan himself, have no power to stop that. This is why your thoughts are challenged the way they are. This is why your minds are, are quote unquote, beat up like they like it is. But when we persevere, when we push through, when we get beyond ourselves into the presence of the Lord. And it is a challenge. It is a challenge for flesh to push through. You you have felt the pressure that's out in the world, that pressure and the forces that are at war with us coming against us and, and 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 i describe it this way this is how i feel when when it's when it's mounting inside of me and i am and i'm i'm getting frustrated and i'm getting angry this is what i see this is what it makes me want to do it makes me want to go into the grocery store Find a shelf loaded with glass bottles and dishes and just put my arm on that shelf and just rake it all on the floor because that's how I feel inside. I, please don't judge me because I'm, I'm being very transparent with you because when that pressure from without is allowed to get in, that's how it makes me feel. But when I push against that, when I rebel against the forces of hell, if I can say it like that, when I say enough is enough. And 
and I open my mouth and I repent of my wrongs and I repent for my angst and I repent for these things. And I open my mouth and I let what's inside come out of me, what really wants to come out. And that's the spirit of God. And I open my mouth and it begins to come out of me in a torrent. Then I know, well, I, I know at that moment that I am, that, that I have, I have sent the enemy packing. You know what I'm talking about. If you were given the microphone, you would be able to say the same thing. It may not be like it is for me, but that's how I feel when it when it reaches that point. But here's the thing, church, you and I have been given this authority within us. We've been given this power within us. This supernatural power of God in us. Second Peter chapter one says that we have been that we are made partakers. We have been made to partake of his divine nature. Oh, no, we're not divine, but we are partakers of his nature. Think about it. Let the scriptures and the spirit of God speak to you right now. Yes, you are going to face this, the spirit of the age. Yes, you're going to find yourself at odds with people that you love. You're going to find yourself at odds with people that you don't even know. Because that's the nature of the world we live in. But the truth is, no matter what happens without, it cannot get in unless I allow it to get in. I keep it out by keeping a constant flow in of the spirit of God. And and flow in has to have flow out. Yes, we are. The Bible speaks that we are vessels of honor that's meet for the master's use. But we're also a in us is a river, rivers of water springing up into everlasting life. And rivers give us the connotation of flow. When a river gets stopped up, it becomes stagnant and it becomes dead, such as the Dead Sea in Israel. The Jordan River runs down to the Dead Sea and there is no outlet. And therefore, the Dead Sea is exactly that. The Salt Sea, it's dead. So rivers, I know the Bible tells us we're vessels. But we also have rivers of living water inside of us springing up into everlasting life. That means there is a constant flow. And that's the spirit that is within. So tonight, this is what the spirit of God is saying to us. You've been given a gift. Use your gift. It is the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the word that Jesus used to the woman at the well when he told her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. That's the same word that Peter used on the day of Pentecost when he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's in John chapter four, verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is our hope. So use your gift. Even when you, quote unquote, do not feel spiritual, use your gift. If you're not using your gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost, and I'm speaking of praying in the spirit, then you are short changing yourself. Yes, we do it to ourselves to not use that gift. It's in us. The gift of God is the gift of a sovereign. It's a gift that someone gives to us that they didn't have to buy it. They didn't have to go get it anywhere. They just had it to give out of their abundance. This is the gift that was given to us by God himself. The spirit of Christ is in our bosom. It lives there. It abides there. So use your gift. When the spirit of the age is warring against your soul and you are engaged in warfare against the kingdom of darkness for the souls of men, then yes, you, your mind, your spirit, your heart, your, your physical, mental, emotional, every aspect of you will, will come under attack because of that very fact. But this is our mission. And we have been given a mission to succeed. We are not going to fail. The devil is lying. If he's telling you anything, if he's telling you anything, he is lying to you. We have been given everything that we will ever need to be successful before Jesus comes. The church is not going down in flames. The church is going up at the coming of the Lord. So that is telling me that when Jesus returns, he is coming back to get a people that he has put here. He has left us here on purpose. And I don't know about you, but I I think it's pretty amazing that You and me get to be part of this last day church. The Holy Ghost was poured out some 2000 or so years ago. And here we are, we're still alive and we're, we're, we're at the door of the coming of the Lord. I don't know how far away it is. But regardless, as Bishop said this morning, regardless of that, it's soon. And we, are going to be successful. So would you pray with me right now? Would you let your spirit out wherever you are, if it's if it's where you can do this, but would you, as I pray, would you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are? Whatever you need to do to get there. If you haven't prayed like you ought today, it's okay. Get it right. Fix it right now. We are in the presence of God. The love and grace of God is flowing abundantly. The purpose of this this time tonight is for the equipping of the saints. And this is equipping us. The devil is battling against us even now. This message is going out. The enemy is battling some of your minds right now. Now you can't do this. You haven't prayed today. You can't do this. Oh, yes, you can. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. And and you can take authority and dominion over that as I'm speaking this word right now. He is a liar. and We take authority and dominion over that lying spirit. We bind that tongue to the roof of his mouth. Shut your mouth. Go back to the pit. Take your lies back to the pit from which you have come. We loose the very spirit of truth upon the people of God. Now, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, father, upon the authority of God's word, 
by the power of your word, your finished work at Calvary and that spirit of God that you poured out into the earth right now in Jesus name. We take authority and dominion over the spirits of hell. Every lying demon, every voice that's telling your people right now that they can't do this. It's a lie from the pits of hell. We have been given the gift of God. And so, Lord, right now we use it. We use it for ourselves. We use it for the glory of God. We use it for the kingdom of God. You've given it to us, Lord. It's a tool. It's a weapon. But we want to use it right now in this moment. Come on. In this moment, we're using it as a tool to build up our most holy faith. Jude said it, building up. Come on, use your gift. Use these tools as a gift to build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm encouraging you to do this. Father, in your name, across the airways, Across the airways right now, wherever these people are, in the name of Jesus, regardless of what they think about their relationship with you, in Jesus' name, your love hasn't changed. Your spirit and power has not waned. It is still the same now as it has ever been. And in Jesus' name, I release, I release to them the gift of faith right now. I loose the gift of faith in Jesus' name upon your people to pray in the Holy Ghost, to use their gift for its intended purpose. In the name of Jesus, yes, we will engage the enemy at some point, but right now we are praying. Right now we are building up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Come on, I know we're not in the same room together, but we need to do this. We need this right now. In the name of Jesus, if you need to go to another room, whatever you do, whatever you need to do, shut a door, go into a closet, whatever you need to do. But this moment needs to be taken advantage of right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, in your name, I, I loose the ministry of angels to go out among your people or wherever they are. God, from the from the West Coast to the East Coast, from North to South, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, send those ministering spirits, as Hebrews says, they are sent forth as, to be ministers to the heirs of salvation, ministers of the heirs of salvation in the name of Jesus. Come on, uh, just a, a, a little bit longer before we close this broadcast tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, this is our confidence that we have in Christ Jesus right now. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we, we forgive ourselves. We release ourselves, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we release ourselves. We're not dangling our own self over hell, as it were, O oh Lord, but we receive grace and forgiveness. We receive your love. We receive, O oh Lord, that which you are giving to us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your great grace and your love, O oh Lord. That mega grace that you have provided for us in the name of Jesus. These tools that you've given us, O oh Lord, especially praying in the spirit, building up our own faith, building up our own faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, keep yourselves in the love of God. 
But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, your most holy faith, using your faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. And we do that, that we may keep ourselves in the love of God while we look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we accept your love tonight. You love us with an un, for an, with an immeasurable love. God is love. That's your nature. That's who you are. That's what you are. You can't be anything else to us, Father. And tonight we receive this love of God. We receive this knowledge tonight, knowing that, Lord, I can't be out of your love. I can be out of fellowship with you, but your love is is endless. It's that that one gift, oh, Lord, that will never cease to be. Those other gifts will cease, O oh Lord, but faith, hope, and love will never end because that's who you are. That's what you are. And so right now, O oh Lord, we are with you in the eternal now, the infinite here. We are in you now. You can't be in the past. If, if there was a past, I know for us there is, and a future for us, but Lord, you are always you are always in the now, the here and the now. And so, Lord, we, we accept this place that we have with you. We accept our calling. We accept our, your choosing of us. You called us and then you chose us. You elected us. And so, Lord, we receive that work of election in us right now. We didn't even choose you. We didn't decide to serve the Lord you called us. And so, Lord, in Jesus name, nothing, nothing can take that from us. We are called. We are chosen. And the Bible says in that day we will be found called, chosen and faithful. And we bless you. We praise you, Holy Father. And we receive the encouraging word that you sent to us tonight, that in the morning when we arise and we go to our to setting the day, the stage for the day as we go to prayer, O oh Lord, laying the groundwork for the will of God for that whole day, then, Lord, we will remember this message. We will remember the love of God, and we will work in this calling that you put on us, Father. We will strive together lawfully with you for the sake of the kingdom, and we praise you, and we bless you, and we honor you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you for your goodness and grace. Thank you for your mercy and kindness towards us, Father. We bless you. We thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I thank God for you. I thank God for the people of the Rock Church. You are awesome and amazing. I love you. Those of you that are joining, I can't see who all's on tonight, but I trust that the word of the Lord has spoken to you and that you will receive this in the spirit in which it was given, recognizing who we are in Christ Jesus, recognizing tonight, right here, right now, that as sons of God, Male or female, as sons of God, our Father has promised that he will sustain us until the very end. So we build up ourselves on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And listen, don't try to analyze it. Don't try to figure out if it's doing any good. It's the word of God. And if he said to do it, we're going to do it whether we feel anything or not. We're going to yield to it, letting God do with that whatever it is he wants to do. When you use your faith to 
enter that mode of prayer, then let your faith soar. Let it just go to as far as as God wants to take it. Letting your mind receive this word tonight that it is effective. It is working. We just don't have to see it or know what's happening to believe it's working. It's the word of God. Amen. It is so. Let it be so according to the word of the Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. I love you dearly. I give honor to you, the Rock Church. You are a great people. It is an honor to serve in the kingdom of God with you. It is an honor to to serve the same Lord. To be people of like precious faith. It is a great privilege to be here tonight with you and to serve in this capacity. Amen. I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. I give honor to Bishop and Sister Smith. Thank you for the opportunity to serve in this capacity. Amen. So God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy um, your week starting in the morning, Lord willing. We, we will trust that God's will will be done in your life. In Jesus' name, amen.